Hi, this video tutorial is a general overview of the digestive system for middle school life science. Um, first place to start is right up here in the mouth. And when you eat food, there's a couple things that happen, and one is you chew it. Chewing it breaks it down into smaller pieces, and sometimes that's called uh, mechanical digestion. And what also starts there is saliva is produced, and saliva mixes with that food, and it starts to break it down chemically. And that chunk of food, well, it's not really a chunk at that point, it's just kind of like a, a blob with uh, food mashed up and saliva mixed in, that's called a bolus, and then that starts to work its way down through the digestive system. The digestive system has a whole bunch of different hollow organs and once it leaves the mouth it then continues through the esophagus into the stomach it goes through the stomach through the small intestine which is made up of three parts the duodenum the ileum and then the jejunum then it goes into the large intestine which is also sometimes called the colon it moves through the large intestine to the rectum and then waste leaves the body through the anus the whole time it's in this, it's all in hollow organs. Now there's a couple other solid organs that make things, but it's important to know that these are all hollow. So the food's never actually inside your body. It's inside these organs, but it's not, uh, it's, it's being kept separate from everything else that's in your body. All of those organs, the hollow ones I just spoke about, are made of several layers. So on the very inside, you've got a layer of epithelial cells, or the same kind of cells that make up your skin, very similar. They create a mucous membrane. And then you've also got some smooth muscle around that. And that smooth muscle is involuntary. And then there's also nerves going into there. And there's also blood vessels. So that as digestion takes place, it's important to realize that this is where molecules leave uh, your, the tubes going through your body and they can actually go into your blood. So carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, all those things that your cells need actually get into your blood as they're passing through these tubes of your digestive system. Now most of that really takes place down here in the small intestine, but other things uh, move into your blood in the large intestine and some also do in your stomach as well. The first tube that we're going to talk about is the esophagus, and that's right here. It's from the back of your throat, and it goes all the way down to your stomach. Actually, it goes a little further there. And to kind of have an idea of where your esophagus is, this is a front view of the heart. Here you can see the heart. There's, there's the aorta. Right behind it is the trachea, and you can see the trachea branches uh, to a right and left bronchi, and then the lungs would be on each side, and the esophagus is behind that. And the esophagus keeps going after the trachea branches off. It keeps going uh, further down, and it actually goes through the diaphragm. And you, in, this di in this drawing, you can't see it, but the diaphragm would be right here above the liver and above the stomach. And the esophagus goes through that and then connects to the stomach. So the stomach is just below that, like we just talked about. And it's a muscular organ where different digestive enzymes are added, uh, acid is added, and that further churns up the, the bolus that went down your esophagus, so there's that little bit of food in there, and it's getting churned up, Thing, all those things are being added, and eventually it passes through, and it goes into the first part of the small intestine, and that's called the duodenum. So here's the small intestine, and the small intestine uh, moves all around. Even though it's called small, that's talking about its diameter. It's actually much longer than the large intestine. And the small intestine is where a bunch of different things are added. So you can see its position here. It's right after the stomach and winds around, but there's some other things near it. The liver's near it, and the pancreas is near it. So the pancreas can add some digestive enzymes, and the liver can add bile, which is stored in the gallbladder. And that helps break things down. The bile will help break down fats, and the other enzymes break down carbohydrates and proteins. And as these things move through the small intestine, they can get absorbed into the blood. Uh, the other thing you should know is 
that the blood vessels end up leaving the small intestine and they go to the liver and that's where any extra glucose, if you have a lot of glucose in your blood, it can get stored into a larger molecule and saved for later and that, that uh, molecule is called glycogen. After the small intestine is the large intestine, so it works its way through the small intestine over here and then it gets into the large intestine and it's also called the colon. The ascending is the part that goes up, the transverse goes across, and the descending goes down. And what happens in the colon is as all that stuff's moving through, most of the molecules you need out of your food have been, been removed. So you've got this leftover stuff, this waste product, and this is where a lot of fermentation takes place. There's a lot of bacteria added. Uh, water is removed, and then that goes into your body and other nutrients and vitamins can be removed as well. And by the time it gets to the end of your large intestine, all that's left is waste product or feces, and then that can leave the body through the rectum and finally the anus. All right, the liver. We talked about the liver just a little bit. And the liver is located right under the diaphragm. Here's the diaphragm. Above it are the heart and lungs, and below it's the abdominal cavity. The stomach's right over here and the liver's right over here. And the liver does a whole bunch of things. We're just going to touch on a few. But one of them is that the liver produces bile. And the bile can move out through this duct system. Uh, the main duct going right into the duodenum is called the common bile duct because bile moves through it. And right below the liver is the gallbladder. The gallbladder is this hollow organ that can store bile. And bile goes into your small intestine right at the beginning. And what bile does is it breaks down fats into smaller pieces. It helps make an emulsion of it. You've probably seen, or you've probably had the experience washing dishes where with hot water and a sponge you can push grease around a pan, but you don't quite get it out. But then as soon as you add some uh, dishwashing detergent, the fat seems to disappear. Well, what's really happening is it's getting broken down into smaller pieces. And that's what bile does to fat as it moves through. It breaks it down into smaller pieces. The other organ to talk about is the pancreas, and the pancreas is located right here kind of under the stomach, and it's part of your endocrine system and your digestive system. Over here you can kind of see the pancreas located behind the stomach right there, and in this drawing it's right here. The pancreas produces digestive enzymes that get released right into the duodenum, and then that helps break down molecules as they pass through the small intestine so that carbohydrates, uh, lipids, and proteins can then get absorbed into your blood. So that's a quick overview. Remember, you chew food right in your mouth, your teeth grind it down in little pieces, your saliva starts the chemical process, and then it moves down your esophagus into your stomach. That's where acid is added and some other enzymes, and it gets churned around. Then it gets moved through your small intestine, and right at the beginning, uh, the duodenum, you have the liver here adding bile. You have the pancreas adding digestive enzymes so that as food moves through the small intestine, the carbohydrates can get broken down, lipids can get broken down, and proteins can get broken down, and those can go into your blood. And then anything left over goes through your large intestine, and that's where water is removed, and any other leftover nutrients and vitamins are removed, and then the solid waste left over, or the feces, leaves the body through the anus.